Hi everyone, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein and welcome to my DVD on the Caracon Exchange Variation. So the Exchange Variation is a rare guest at tournament practice and as a matter of fact people really underestimate this opening. But I will show you a very good setup for white that will hopefully give you a good idea how to set up your uh, pieces for the middle game and the ensuring attack on the king side. And the exchange variation starts after e4, c6, d4, d5, e takes d, c takes d. And here it's very important for white to occupy the b1 h7 diagonal for his bishop, bishop d3. As a matter of fact, this setup is going to be very similar with the colors reversed with the d4 opening. Whereas, for instance, if black is a white player, he would play for the minority attack on the queen side. And white, which in this case would be black player, attacking on the king side. So this pawn structure is extremely important and it happens in a lot of openings. And by pawn structure I mean uh, white is going to play c3, b2, c3, d4. Eventually uh, black will try to get his light square bishop out and then he's going to play uh, to pawn to e6. So the pawn structure is going to be f7, e6, d5. So basically keep in mind about the pawn structure and the attacking possibilities here for white. So what does black do after bishop d3? Typically black plays knight c6 hitting the pawn c3 and knight f6. A lot of opening books don't pay much attention to the exchange variation and they say that it's totally harmless for black. But in reality if white is a well prepared player and you know the ideas then you can really get a very good game with attacking possibilities. As a matter of fact None other than Bobby Fischer used this setup against the super solid Tigran Petrosian and he managed to win a very nice and instructive game that we will go over later in the series. So what does white do now? Well obviously you have very nice diagonal for this bishop. What about the c1 bishop? And here before you even get the knights out you play bishop to f4 and again, the key is to get this diagonal and fight for the e5 outpost. This is the theme of the setup. Well, black in turn tries to get the bishop outside of his pawn chain. I should also mention that e6 doesn't make much sense. You're locking your bishop in and white is simply going to play knight f3, castles, the other knight comes to d2. Eventually you're going to play knight e5 and just have a free hand on the king side. Pretty powerful attack. So, all right, so let's say black plays bishop g4, hindering the development. If knight f3, then the knight is pinned, and black can simply play e6. So here, white usually plays this tricky move queen b3, immediately trying to point out the weakness on b7. And black has three main moves to counter it. Knight a5, and this is the famous Fisher Petrosian game that we're going to take a look at uh, the next part. There is also Queen c8, and which is a kind of big chapter, and Queen d7. Both of them are very similar, and White's plan doesn't change. Um, I should also mention that Queen b6 is definitely not a big deal. You can, of course, trade Queen's ruin. Uh, black spawn structure or you can even allow black to take on b3 so you can take with the a pawn and open up your rook. So this is totally harmless for white. So just to give you a brief introduction to the setup, let's say black plays queen c8, knight bd2. Well obviously knight f3 is no good just yet because after bishop takes pawn takes we have our king side totally ruined. So that's why we set it up with knight d2, e6, knight f3, uh, bishop e7 for instance, castles, 
and if bishop takes knight takes castles and this is just the typical kind of setup for white that you keep in mind when you go for this position well you have a very nice bishop the outpost on e5 this rook can swing over to the king side rook e1 the queen can also swing over to c2 or d1 with the knight coming to e5 and then you can do either rook lifts or pawn storm with g4 g5 and you can see the dynamic possibilities opening up well what does black do well black tries to of course do the minority attack setup which is not easy to get the b5 going so he's gonna have to play a6 followed by b5 and even rook b8 is impossible so this is really hard for black to execute his plan so this is just the introductory setup and we will go over details um, in the next part so the first question arises can black try to stop white's setup so yes there are two ways black can try to stop the setup he can play so after this move knight c6 c3 he can play queen c7 notice stopping this move bishop f4 and white has actually a number of ways to counter this move queen c7 the most the simplest way The simplest way to counter this is to play the move knight to e2. Notice that white is being flexible. Uh, he is getting ready to play bishop f4 and he's getting ready to mid bishop g4 with f3. So this is quite nice. If bishop h5, then knight f4, hitting the bishop and the pawn. Um, and white gets a great game. And if black plays the bishop to d7, notice the bishop is going to be a little bit passive then after bishop f4 really to justify this queen c7 move black has to make some serious concessions in his pawn structure so he would have to play a move such as e5 again as i mentioned earlier queen b6 is simply met by queen b3 uh, threatening to ruin black's pawn structure and of course this type of trade always works in white's favor why because first of all opens up the rook and because these pawns are even though they're doubled but they're very well clustered together you can also start your attack with b4 and even b5 queenside pawn expansion so this is extremely good pawn structure for white so let's go back so after e5 d takes e knight takes e5 black's pawn structure is compromised we got a very nice target the isolated d pawn uh, i like simply just to draw back with the bishop to c2 and after bishop to d6 simply castle and this is totally fine position for white if for instance black plays bishop c6 i like this move bishop a4 trying to trade light square bishops and this position you know you have the outpost on d4 very easy to play uh, for the white player so the bishop can jump back to g3 the b1 knight can get rewrited to d2 and eventually when the bishops trade to b3 and just in general uh, pretty good setup so let's go back and look at other moves for black to try to hinder white setup well you can also do the same idea with the move knight f6 and after c3 queen c7 so this is one possibility again i like the move knight e2 with ideas quite similar to the other lines uh, if you try to harass white's queen right away then after queen b3 queen c7 um, here you have a very simple solution you can simply play h3 bishop h5 g4 bishop g6 and now after bishop takes g6 h take g it looks as though white's pawn structure is ruined on the king side but there is tactics g5 x clamp hitting the knight and guess what whenever the knight moves we're gonna win a pawn and here black doesn't have sufficient compensation for the pawn um, for instance if knight c6 bishop e3 e6 queen f3 uh, bishop e7 h4 and castle in not only castles into the attack but also don't forget white is up a pawn so this is just really bad for black 
So this approach doesn't quite work. And finally, let's take a look at a different setup where black tries to uh, fianchetto his dark square bishop. So after e4, c6, d4, d5, e takes d, c takes d, bishop d3. Black can try to fianchetto his dark square bishop after inserting the moves knight c6 or knight f6, or just after knight c6, c3, g6. But if you really think about this idea, it doesn't make much sense. You're trying to fianchetto the bishop that's going to look at this wall in terms of the b2, c3, d4 pawns. And so here I simply like the move knight f3, bishop g7, castles. Uh, knight f6 actually transposes to a line we're going to look at later. The tricky move here is the move knight to h6, which looks a little bit odd. Why would you move the knight to the side of the board? But there's actually some concrete ideas behind this move. So if white is not careful, he may let black execute his plan with f6 and e5. And of course, you don't want to allow your opponent to have full control over the center. And another idea is to simply play bishop f5, try to trade light square bishops without compromising the pawn structure. So what does white do against knight h6? Well, I simply like this prophylactic move rook e1, putting rook on a half open file. And now if black plays bishop f5, you can simply play bishop f4. And whenever this trade happens, for instance, castles, knight bd2, knight f5, then white gets a very nice edge with knight e5. Again, the key is that out, outpost for the knight. And of course, if knight takes, we can take either with the bishop or the pawn. And later on, white can just simply double up on the e-file or play both kingside and queenside. It is true that black doesn't really have very visible weaknesses, but his position is just much more passive. And so finally, let's look at a more tricky setup with the line after castles, bishop f4, f6. So you see the idea here is try to get e5 going in the right moment. And I like to take advantage right away of the weakening of the a2 g8 diagonal. c4 x clam. And this is a very unusual idea. First you play at c3, but now you play c4. But notice we have a very concrete approach to the position. We got a bishop which is blocked in, knight on the side of the board, the e-file, obviously white wants to blow up the center and get quick counterplay. So of course if pawn takes, bishop takes, king h8, this is just a huge advantage for white. You can either slow play with h3 or try to punish black with d5 and this pawn is a backwards pawn. We have a nice outpost for our knight, a very good position. So how else black can take advantage of this c4 move? Well, black can try to pin the knight with the idea knight takes d4, but the tactics pretty much all work in white's favor. For instance, c takes d, knight takes d4, and now very quiet move bishop e4, everything is defended. And if black simply trades everything on f3, we can really underscore white's pluses. The knight is coming to c3, rooks e1 and d1, with a lot of pressure on the open files and simply look at these pathetic pieces, the h6 knight and the g7 bishop. Big edge for white. 